Hello everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Yes, I'm aware Christmas is over, what the heck. Another Merry Christmas greetings from me. I know today's video is not a Christmas video, but I cannot help but resist myself talking about this movie today. And that is Batman Master the Phantasm, which was released 30 years ago on December 25th, 1993, Christmas Day. I had this movie on Blu-ray in the Batman animated series collection, along with Batman Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, the second Batman animated series movie. And I just recently got this at uh, Target on 4K, worth the price for me. I mentioned this in my uh, movies that came out the year I was born video. This is the first movie I mentioned. I did not go into full detail about it because, again, I wanted to save it for a solo video on this one and give it its own essay. This movie is very nostalgic for me. Despite having said in previous Batman videos I made in the past, despite loving Batman movies like Batman 89, Batman Returns, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy movies, Ben Affleck's Batman movies to some degree, and the recent Robert Pattinson Batman movie. Don't get me wrong, great Batman movies. I love them a lot and I respect them. They have their place and purpose in comic book movies and Batman films. But honestly, when people ask me, what is my favorite Batman movie? The answer is, Batman Master the Phantasm. Why? Because this day is without a doubt the best Batman movie ever, hands down. Very rarely do I say this, this movie, in my own personal opinion, is perfect from start to finish. And you ask yourself, why do I think this is the best Batman movie ever? Well, to sum that up, in the words of the nostalgia critic, unlike Batman movies where their version of Batman was Adam West, Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, George Clooney, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and Robert Pattinson's Batman, this is not any of those Batmans. It was the real definitive Batman, staying true to the original comic books. As my friend Christian said when I did a video with him on the uh, Batman animated movies, unlike Tim Burton's Batman movies around this time period, 1993, this movie really delved into the psychology of Batman's origin story. But you can say that Batman Begins and Pattinson's Batman movie delved into that a little bit to some degree. Back in 2019, I did a podcast retrospect on the Batman anime movie with my friend Christian on his YouTube channel, along with Jeremy and our late great friend Chris Mano. Link in the description. The movie has great aesthetics with a gangster feel to it. Compared to the budget of the animated series, the animation is excellent in this movie. Because this is a big budget animated movie, they were able to make the animation look more authentic. I love the opening visual of Gotham City with the soundtrack. What prevents me from pointing out the CG animation flaw if it still holds up to this day or not is the opening of Gotham City and the great soundtrack done by Shirley Walker. What's great about this movie, if you never saw an episode of the animated series, you can watch this first. They don't mention any events from the animated series. The acting and cast of this movie is fantastic and perfect. As I said before my top 30 favorite Batman the Animated Series episodes, sorry for repeating myself, Kevin Conroy is without a doubt the best Batman actor ever. He was and will always be my favorite Batman. May he rest in peace because anytime I read the comic books, his voice pops in my mind. I thought the flashback scene was done like Citizen Kane style, where they basically took the idea of Batman Year One for inspiration for this movie, but done as a PG version. We see how Bruce is trying to find his way and how he can make the enemies afraid of him. We also see him before he went the Batman route, he was in love with Andrea Beaumont. Bruce has a tough dilemma, does he keep his parents' vow to do justice for Gotham that the law does not do? Or does Bruce choose happiness, a normal life with the woman that he loves? We see Bruce fighting crime for the first time dressed as a thug rather than Batman. It makes it a little confusing for police officers to think that he was a thief. It was a first failure attempt at fighting crime for him as a hero. It's a trial and error for Bruce trying to find his path as a superhero. When Bruce proposes to Andrea, a swarm of bats fly out of a cave. It's a sign and an omen that his destiny is calling him, and that Bruce is not meant for love or happiness. Bruce could have maybe had a happy life if he had married Andrea. Bruce may have had a happy life if he had married Andrea. When Bruce finds love, he feels guilty, trying not to forget his parents' vow, the cemetery. On a stormy night at the cemetery, he asks his parents for forgiveness and wanted to be happy. It's like his parents communicate with him through the storm, telling him that happiness for him is a crime and a sin. After being done by Andrea, 
Bruce dressed up as Batman for the first time. You don't see him. It's all darkness. And Alfred is scared and horrified by his look. Walks away. The music and darkness says it all. It shows that the little boy that Alfred raised is gone. A bat is born. It's one of those best Batman movie moments that gives you goosebumps. But it also shows how after the breakup, he's psychologically heartbroken. It motivates him to fight crime, protect the people of Gotham City he cares about. I like the part when Bruce is investigating the mob boss murders and connecting them. Finds out Andrea Beaumont, his former lover, is back in town. Alfred thinks he will connect with her once he's solved the crime. Batman says to Alfred, You think you know everything about me, don't you? Alfred responds, I might as well bloody well ought to, sir. Batman hops in the Batman was saying, Well, you're wrong. Dries off. Zoom! Another classic example of Bruce and Alfred, how Alfred's just like a father figure to Bruce after his parents' death, and how Alfred wishes for Bruce to be happy and give up crime fighting. Compared to the animated series with the Joker did not kill because of the kids' cartoon TV show, in this movie, it's one of the most brutal, horrific kills in the series when the Joker kills gangster Salvador Valestra. The Joker catches the phantasm on videotape, realizing Batman is not the one responsible for killing the mob bosses. The phantasm escapes the bomb trap. That part used to scare me as a little kid when the phantasm finds Salvador Valestra already dead. The Joker beat into the chase. It also explains a little background origin story that the Joker was a gangster sideman for gangsters Chucky Saw, Bonsky, and Salvador Valestra. In a flashback, apparently he murders Andrea Beaumont's father. That's how the Joker is connected to all this. It's simple and straightforward. They don't give too much of a depth about his origin. This is basically an alternative Joker origin story, not like the killing joke. It had a little similarity from Tim Burton's Batman 1989 movie where the Joker was a gangster before becoming the Joker. They don't call him Jack Napier. He has no name as the gangster, which I'm fine with. Again, as my friend Christian said, that's what makes the Joker a great villain, not knowing his background origin, making it a mystery unique. I said this before in my Batman animated series favorite episodes video, so I'm repeating myself. As a little kid watching the animated series, it blew my mind away to find out that Luke Skywalker was the Joker. It turns out he did go to the dark side after all. He's great in this movie. His laugh is the Joker is so iconic to this day. When I still read Batman and Joker comic books, his voice pops in my head. It's so perfect. It's hard to describe like why Mark Hamill is so perfect as the Joker and why he's the best Joker to this day. With his recent announcement of retiring as the Joker because of the death of Kevin Conner, it makes sense, but at the same time, I'm still going to miss him as the voice of the Joker. Andre, played by Dana Delaney, was his first love and made Bruce happy since the tragedy of his parents' death. She was the one chance Bruce had wanting happiness. Spoiler alert, if you've not seen this movie, stop the video right here. Andrea was the phantasm, but sadly, Vengeance motivated her to kill the mob bosses that killed her father. Vengeance ruined her soul as Alfred tells Bruce. Bruce chose his path as Batman fighting crime for justice. Andrea chose the path of evil. Dana Delaney does a great job in this movie. That's why they brought her back playing the voice of Lois Lane on the Superman animated series TV show three years later. I like the look and design of the Phantasm. It's cool, with the sharp blade on his hand. As the Joker said, he looks like the ghost of Christmas yet to come. He also has that Grim Reaper look. His voice is like so deep and low and somber. I get the chill when he's about to kill one of the mob bosses when he says, Your angel of death awaits. This is a very original Batman villain that was not in the comic books. But from what I've read, they took inspiration from the Batman Year 2 graphic novel, which is a semi-sequel to Frank Miller's Batman Year 1 comic. I read that once not that long ago. It was alright, but I don't remember that well to be honest off the top of my head. But that's a different topic. This just came to mind. They actually took the same story from this uh, graphic novel for this movie. I wish they bought this character back. Maybe because of this movie not being part of the time it's released. That could be a reason why they didn't bring back the Phantasm back in later seasons of Batman the Animated Series. The character Andrea Boma did make an appearance on Justice League Unlimited episode Epilogue. Great episode. I highly recommend that episode. I'm not sure the voice of Andre was in that episode. I'm not sure it was Dana Delaney or not. I'll leave a post as I edit this video.
from doing research, apparently it was not dated related to the voice of uh, Andrea Beaumont. I honestly could not find the uh, voice actress who did the voice of Andrea in Justice League Unlimited epilogue episode. Even though Andrea was a phantasm, Stacey Keish was the voice of the phantasm is great. He was also the voice of Carl Beaumont. Here's a shocker right here. He was a neo-Nazi in American History X with Edward Norton and Edward Furlong. Despite killing the mob bosses, you see and understand why she was doing this because they killed her father. She admits to Batman that it was not right or wrong, but had no choice. And basically, like I said before, she went to the dark side, becoming a killer. Jim Gordon took a back scene in this movie. He was the only one that believed that Batman was not responsible to not kill the mob bosses. When he wants to part of trying to arrest Batman... That was the last scene of the movie, and you never see him again the rest of the movie after that. Not only this movie with great performances from Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, Dana Delaney, the gangster are played by great character actors. Never realized as a kid how good they had good like actors playing the gangsters. Like for example, Dick Miller plays Chucky Saw, who was the first one to be killed by the Phantasm. Buzz Brodsky played by Jerry Ryan, the second mob boss killed by the Phantasm. His death is very horrific, you don't see it. Salvador Valester, played by Ava Goda, makes sense he voices one of the gangsters, because he played a gangster in the first Godfather movie. When he sees the connection, thinking that Batman was responsible for the murders of the previous mob bosses, he sees and realizes that he's next. He hires the Joker, and boy, that was a mistake. Arthur Reeves is a politician who blames, hates, and thinks Batman is the one responsible for killing the mob bosses, but the Joker tells that it was not the bad when he was blackmailing him knowing that he was involved and the one who ratted out Carl Beaumont. He was a real sleazy politician because he wanted money for his campaign election from Carl Beaumont, but he refused. It's weird and crazy how he met Bruce Wayne and became friends and goes behind his back dating his former girlfriend, Andrea Beaumont. Here's a crazy fact. Arthur Reyes was voiced by the same guy who was in Die Hard who ratted out John McClane pretending to be his friend that was shot by... Hans Gruber. This movie has some of my favorite moments in a Batman movie. Like, for example, Batman vs. the Police. After my mob boss, Valestro, is killed in an explosion, Batman comes face to face against the Phantasm trying to bring him to justice for framing for crimes he did not commit. The Phantasm disappears, and Batman is chased down by the police. When Batman hides at a construction site, one of the SWAT team members shoots a gas tank without permission and it explodes. You see Batman bleeding and injured. Compared to the animated series, which was a kid's show, they had a little blood and gore in this movie for a kid's movie around that time. It has some very pretty gruesome deaths for a PG kid's movie, too. This is one of the few times I've ever seen Batman being in a vulnerable situation. To be fair, he was almost caught in Batman Begins at Arkham Asylum. And he escaped the police in the new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson. Just when you think this is the end for Batman running away from the police, Unmasked after tricking the police with his cape and mask on a wooden board, almost risking his identity being exposed, Andrea saves his life and they drive off. Another scene that I like in this movie is the final showdown between Batman and the Joker is great. This is my favorite Batman vs. the Joker showdown. Again, more blood when Batman kicks the Joker in the face, blood comes out of his mouth and loses a tooth. The Joker sets off toy helicopters, and one of the toy helicopters... Slip right through Batman's arm. Batman punches one of the toy helicopters like the Hulk. Batman smash! The Joker sets up a bomb at this old amusement park. The Joker's about to escape off on a jetpack. Batman stops him from taking off. Batman figures if he dies, the Joker will die with him. Not taking shit from the Joker. They fall and are beat up again. More blood. Andrea grabs the Joker. The place explodes when she disappears with the Joker. He laughs knowing it's the end for him. Batman survives the explosion, unsure of Andrea's faith. At the Batcave, receiving medical treatment, feeling guilt for not saving the love of his life, Alfred told him how that he did not go down the same path as Andrea, being vengeful, vigilante. Andrea's path was chosen a long time ago, before this. In the Batcave, Bruce spots a necklace, a photo of him and Andrea when they were younger, and it's a hint that she's still alive. But the love that Bruce and Andrea had once had can never be fixed. Andrea is alive, but once again, leaves Bruce for good. She's all alone, her revenge did not fix or make things better. The music done by Shirley Walker is legendary, magnificent, beautiful, amazing, and epic. It's one of the best Batman movie soundtracks, right up there with Danny Elfman, Hans Zimmerman, 
This is Shirley Walker's best soundtrack out of all the Batman animated series. Anytime I watch this movie, the ending gives me the chills. After this crazy event, Batman is up on a roof build and feeling sad that Andreas once again left him for good. He realizes love and happiness are not in the cards for him. Batman sees the Bat signal, continues his war on crime. Gotham City forgives him and believes in the Batman again. Batman shoots his battering hook and flies into the night. On a side personal note, when my ex dumped me, this ending scene was a scene I came back to remind myself to continue becoming the strongest version of myself in life. And sometimes when I still go back to this scene when I feel down sometimes, or also making my YouTube videos too. As I get older in life, I feel more like Batman, I feel so connected to him on a different level. Also amazed me how as a kid I did not realize that Tia Carrera, aka Cassandra from Wayne's World, and Nani and Lilo and Stitch did a song for this movie, the end credits. And you know what? She's not a bad singer. She's solid. But she's not really known for her singing. She's mostly known for her acting. She's an occasional singer. I'm not sure other songs she's did or she has an album, honestly. Despite this movie being the best Batman movie ever made, but you ask yourself, why was this movie not a hit when it came out back in 1993? The answer to this is bad marketing. Despite every live action Batman movie that has come out since 1989, has always had a great marketing. Even Batman and Robin, one of the worst Batman movies ever made, had a good marketing. When this movie came out, it did not have a good marketing. No one knew about it, no one went to go see it in the movie theaters when it was released. This movie came out when Disney was not releasing any animated movies that year. One would think that Warner Brothers would jump and avoid competition with Disney, but that's not the case right here. I guess maybe at the time no one expected a kid's animal to be like this to be taken seriously because it was not a Disney movie, it was Warner Brothers instead. You could say it was rare for Warner Bros. to release an animated movie. You could say it was rare at the time for Warner Bros. to release an animal movie that was not Disney. The movie since then has gained a cult following on home video from VHS tapes, DVDs, Blu-rays, and recent 4K releases. As a little kid growing up in the late 90s and early 2000s, I was probably one of the few kids who knew about this movie. I had the movie at VHS tape because of owning all the uh, Batman animated series VHS tapes as a little kid. It did not occur to me as a little kid that this movie was released theatrically. My assumption was thinking that it was a direct-to-video release. But originally, this was supposed to be a direct-to-video movie. But the producers decided to release it theatrically thinking that it was a good idea for a Batman movie that sounded great. Despite its poor box office failure in 1993, the movie now has got a lot more attention talked more than was talked about in 1993. People on social media rave about this movie a lot. I once watched a video on YouTube from an old Siskel and Ebert video. They didn't watch and review this movie when it came out back in 1993. They watched it two years later, 1995, around the time when Batman Forever was coming out. And they said they really loved it a lot more seeing how much adults enjoyed it, as much as kids did, and felt that this Batman movie was more adult-oriented than the recent Batman movies around that time period. And despite Mark Hamill being the most iconic Joker, film critic Gene Siskel said he did not like Mark Hamill's voice as a Joker. As much as I like and respect the Gene Siskel, but I don't agree with him on this one, but it would be a generation thing. He was an old-school Batman from the 60s, Batman Cesar Romero, and up to Jack Nicholson's Joker. In case you're wondering how the Joker survived the fire was still in the later episodes of the animated series. After this event, well, believe it or not, there was an actual comic book sequel. When the Batman animated series was popular around this time, they made their own comic books based on the show. Guess they figured they could not turn an original story into an episode of the show, I guess they figured, let's make our own comic book series. I've only read, like, random ones. They were good ones. I'm just not sure if you consider these canon or not, despite... They use some of the comic books as episodes of the series, like Holiday Nights or Old Wounds. In the comic book, it explains how Andrea and the Joker survived the fire. Andrea escaped from the sewer cell with the Joker. I'll admit, I haven't read that comic book in a long time since I was a senior in high school. It was good for what I read, but it definitely does not top this movie for sure. Originally, I wanted this movie to be the last ever episode of the Batman the Animated Series, but I'm glad they did not end the show with this movie. Granted, it could have been a good way, to, but still. I'll admit, as a kid, I would watch my VHS tapes of Batman the Animated Series and watch Batman Master of the Phantasm as a final conclusion. 
When you watch this in the animated series, you can tell the difference with the animation from the show and this movie's budget. How beautiful the animation, having that 1940s film noir vibe, atmosphere, ambiance. This is a Batman movie I'll always go back to and always have fun rewatching over and over again. If you're a beginner and wanted to get into Batman, I recommend starting with this movie. You won't be disappointed in it. Before I end this video, here's my friend Jeremy's recording on Batman Mask of the Phantasm. We hear what his thoughts are. Batman Mask of the Phantasm is easily one of the best Batman movies ever made. It's got a great story, a great cast, and great action scenes. I really like how it has flashbacks to Bruce's early days leading up to him becoming Batman. The cast is great. You've got Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as the Joker. And they both do an amazing job, as always. I had the pleasure of meeting Kevin Conroy at New York Comic Con back in 2014, and he was very nice. You've also got Dana Delaney as Bruce's love interest, Andrea Beaumont. Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. voices Alfred Pennyworth. Bob Hastings voices Commissioner Gordon. Stacy Keach voices the mysterious Phantasm. And Abe Vigoda voices crime boss Salvatore Valestra. They all do a great job in their roles, and I had the pleasure of meeting Abe Vigoda at Chiller Theater back in 2015. I really like that they got an actor from The Godfather to voice a crime boss in this movie. I thought that was really cool. I just love the story of Bruce and Andrea's romance and how it unfortunately falls apart. It's like a perfect tragedy because Bruce is torn between finding happiness and beginning his war on crime, so that creates a compelling challenge for his character. I also really like the Joker's role in this movie because he plays a part in the Phantasm's origin, and of course, I just love watching the Joker in Batman movies. So yeah, this is a great movie and definitely one of the best Batman movies, hands down. That was my video of Batman Master Phantasm. Thank you for watching. See you all next time.